uh, later. Once we have question, you can shoot on the chat and we'll talk, okay? Okay, here's the people coming. Uh. Hey, hey, coming in. <laughs> okay, so if, well, most of you know me, right? Alex Koloskov, uh, I recently, recently, one more than a year ago, moved uh, from Georgia, uh, Atlanta, Georgia to here. Uh, we got the studio and uh, I do uh, product photography for, well, about, well, I think more than 10 years, but professionally since 2006, that's where we registered a company. Uh, and uh, today I want to a little bit talk and mostly show you uh, the biggest difference uh, between just what I call normal photography, meaning that people photography, that's what, probably the first uh, uh, thing that uh, anyone who gets a camera chooses the subject, right, the person to shoot. And uh, so the difference between person and, uh, well, people and product photography, uh, there is like big difference and it's uh, all the difference is in technical stuff, I would say. Probably nothing in creativity and nothing in the approach of the show that, well, all the thing applies to any type of uh, art or I would say profession, meaning that you have to be creative, uh, you have to be, you have to do something different than what you see around you, because this is how you uh, will be recognized. And without recognition, it will be always, uh, well, just a hobby, probably, which is hard to uh, monetize and hard to, well, you, you just get less response if it's not recognized, right? What's the reason for shooting it for yourself? Uh, so all this applies to any type of photography. We're not going to talk about this today, even though uh, I realized that you know, creative part of product photography sometimes may not be easy for people who really like to shoot products uh, because uh, we are mostly introverts. We are very technical, sort of engineering mind. Uh, I would say about 80% men, then about 20% of people who kind of do product photography. A woman, maybe even more, you know, towards men. That's what I see, you know, we have uh, over 30,000 uh, registered users on footage, so I kind of a little bit see numbers. I never run that statistic because it's hard to, there is no field of, uh, you know, gender on the profile, uh, but this is uh, the reality. So product photography is very technical stuff, I mean, technically oriented. And uh, this is glad that I see <laughs> our girls here, uh, awesome. Uh, that's kind of, uh, I always admire uh, when, you know, more people interested in product photography. So, uh, let me check uh, how we're doing on the chat. Well, there is no pluses, but I assume, guys, you see <laughs> uh, and uh, you can hear. So, let's start from something that you probably know. Uh, I'm gonna use it will be demonstration, like I said. All will be demonstration. Uh, I'll show you something. Once you have a question, please shoot, okay? Any, anything, I, if, or if you don't understand my English, uh, just give me some hint about this. So, uh, in studio, we use strobe lights. I use strobe lights, and it's not a requirement. Any light can be used. Like, let's say we have there uh, con continuous lighting that highlights that corner, uh, very similar to, uh, I can show you, uh, to strobe in terms of how it look. This is just a monolight, okay? Uh, this is about 1,000 watt equivalent uh, LED continuous light. Uh, but mostly I use it for uh, video. For photography, I use strobe lights. You know strobes, right? You probably, uh, all of you have uh, this off-camera flashes, right? You use them. So one big poof release lots of light, but it's only a fraction of a second. Uh, that's we're gonna use. And uh, the reason, well, more power. Why I use strobe over continuous? Because I can get way more light uh, for the shot that I need. 
from strobe, it's almost impossible to get it uh, from uh, the continuous light, especially when uh, I try to freeze action, meaning that something is move, moving. You either need to freeze it by uh, changing the shutter speed of your camera, right, making it shorter, or uh, we can use uh, strobe light. We can shoot in a relatively long shutter, X-Sync shutter speed. This is what I have on the camera. Uh, well, for this camera, it's a little bit different, but for most cameras, it's one uh, 200 of a second shutter speed. That's what you use to shoot with uh, studio strobe lights. Plus, minus, different camera has maybe from 160 of a second, 160 to 250. Uh, and uh, we freeze action by uh, shooting with very short flash duration meaning that if uh, something moves really fast, even at one to hundredth of a second, I can freeze it like it was shot with one eight thousand of a second, just because the light is very short. So this is what happened when we set the, you know, just turn it off. When we set the camera with one to hundredth of a second, even though I can go one eight hundredth of a second with this camera, uh, but like I said, it doesn't matter, F9. Uh, this is, uh, uh, let me show you on the screen. You will see the, I should tether it. And uh, I'll be showing you every picture we're taking on this screen. Do you see it well, or it's some reflection? Is there any reflection it's there? It's okay. Okay, so at least not uh, direct light. Actually, we can probably turn off this light. <clears throat> okay. So, without strobe, with the light that we have in the studio, it's still a completely dark picture, right? Mm -hmm. Just because exposure is not enough to get that light to, to the sensor. I saw 50 here, which kind of makes things even worse. Uh -huh. So, we need to... Yeah, this, for this camera, native I saw is 50. But uh, I usually shoot native ISO in the studio. I rarely try to raise ISO. I mean, I don't need it in most cases because this is what uh, when we get in maximum of quality at native ISO of the camera. So, camera is here, manual focus. All right now we have one light. This light, okay, just very simple light. I mean, <laughs> very simple light modifier. Uh, Reflector, 70 degree reflector with honeycomb grid. This is 40 degree honeycomb grid. This is something that uh, we use to modify light to limit its spread. You're familiar with things like this? There are uh, little honeycomb grid even for off on camera flashes, I mean, off camera, the speed lights, right? There are little one if you want to direct it to some point without spilling much around. So uh, let me put it back there. Sometimes it's tricky. Okay. Sure. Why do you use uh, yellow light? Yellow? Yeah, it's not white. It's not yellow. Uh, what you see is the modeling light. So it's just a tungsten bulb inside the head, and there are two lights, two bulbs in it. One modeling light, that's what you see, and one is the bulb for the flash, for the strobe. Okay, so uh, I can easily turn off the modeling light. It's optional, basically. It has nothing to do with the picture that you'll be taking, but what it gives the photographer the ability to see uh, in real time, you know, before clicking, uh, what it will do for the subject. If it's dark enough and if modeling light is bright enough. In our case, it's very opposite, basically. <laughs> modeling light is very weak. You won't really see it, you know, what it's doing to the subject, and uh, we have lots of light around. So let me put it back. Okay, plus is there. Awesome. Uh, so guys, if you're online, you can kind of start putting the questions together, but it will be a time when I will sit and uh, we'll answer them. Uh, this camera is on, I mean, the lens or camera on the manual focus, and uh, the whole settings for the camera is on manual. Manual focus, manual exposure, not the aperture priority or shutter priority or auto or program, no, all manual. P 
because camera cannot guess what output for the stroke will be. It just have no idea. And uh, we put shutter speed, aperture, uh, even the focus of the lens. So I'll be a uh, model a little bit here, something like, hello, mm, crazy face, but I want to show you something. You see me, right? You can recognize that, hey, this is Alex with just one simple light, nothing more. Works perfectly. Yeah, there is some deep shadows on my face, but still it's uh, quite recognizable. Yeah. Right. So I didn't. To to make it more similar to the natural one. Okay. Uh, so the question is, I kind of uh, uh, waiting it about skin color. This is different. Uh, this is true. It's different. I didn't set uh, white balance. Well, not even white balance. Actually, uh, we're supposed to use a um, gray card to shoot it, right? To set correct white balance for this light, and uh, skin tone will be uh, supposed to be matching. If it depends on the camera, but basically you can get. But this is not just outside of uh, what I'm going to show you because uh, first thing, I shoot RAW, always RAW. So I can adjust, you know, in RAW camera, it doesn't matter what kind of white balance you have in your camera. It's completely irrelevant because you can adjust it uh, later in Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever you're going to use it. Uh, the only thing that you need, uh, the grade card, basically. Without it, it's hard to guess. Uh, so yeah, you should grade card if uh, there is anything which, uh, well, requires us to have correct uh, color. In many cases, in product photography, I just found that I don't even need grade card because we tweak colors, we tweak appearance of the product. And uh, in product photography, again, in most of uh, creative product photography advertisement, it's not about mm, delivering the, how we call it, the closest to the reality image. No, it's about making it, whoa, whoa, it looks cool, I want to buy it. And you, you understand about advertisement, it's not about showing what is the correct is. It's more like making you want it. So we make it nicer. With colors as well. Sometimes boosting colors, sometimes tweaking. But with, of course, with uh, people photography. And again, even with people photography, makeup kind of turns off you from the reality. And what's the reality? Is, you know? It's like makeup, then you Photoshop, then many things. But you're absolutely right. A great card is uh, required for people photography, I would say. For product, maybe not. Um, sure. Uh, manual focus, focus. Do you just, you know the exact uh, le uh, distance from your camera? How do you place your... I put something here. I put this subject that we're going to shoot right now. And I uh, look at the camera and I just focus judging through viewfinder. Do you trust your eyes? Huh? Do you trust your eyes? Oh, yeah, definitely. I have no, I mean, I'm fine. Um, I don't, well, it's okay if, let's say, you don't trust your eyes or if um, you sometimes not enough light, you can't really see. Uh, you can use autofocus to set focus and then switch it to manual. So you can trust camera if, if you sure that it will pick up what needs to be focused, uh, then turn it to manual. And then don't move either camera or the subject, of course. Uh, because again, we don't need out of focus. It may, you know, if it's out, the camera may decide to change it somewhere during the shot and you won't be aware of it. And later it's too late. So uh, you see how with this light, I came up with one light, I mean, Let's put the bottle and do the same shot. You see the bottle, you can recognize this is bottle. But do you really recognize the bottle on this shot? Hardly. Well, you understand that, and I kind of turn it a label uh, behind. Uh, just to show you how different your approach in product photography. Uh, in many cases, okay, question for you. Why it's different? Why this light doesn't really show the shape, doesn't really show you much of this bottle? and why it worked okay for me. Not enough light? Oh, it's bright. Why, I mean, why it was enough for me? Background. It was no background for me. The difference in the surface reflect reflectiveness. 
I'm mad. I mean, our skin is semi-mad. What it means? It diffuses the light that it reflects. Light hits here from a spot, from very kind of uh, a particular area on the universe. <laughs> uh, so small light. It hits the skin. Skin diffuses it. We get in reflection, and uh, this diffused light basically gets back to the camera, and you see that every piece of my skin that hit with light visible on the camera because it, some of the rays was reflected directly to the lens. Because it was different reflect, uh, direction of that light, right? It's matte subject. When the light hit matte subject, it reflects everywhere. So some of the light will hit the lens. With the glossy subject, it basically it's a mirror. So the biggest difference, it's a bottle. Uh, glass, it's glossy. It's like a mirror. Only certain angle will get reflection to the lens and to the sensor. The rest uh, angles from that light will go all kind of directions without spilling anything to the, to the lens. And this is the biggest thing. Uh, let's say if you will, uh, there is a thing called uh, dueling spray. Basically, it's spray which, if you spray, it dries out and it make, uh, makes surface matte. If you'll do this, boom, bottle will appear. But we're not going to do this because the bottle is glossy and we want to show that it's glossy. So I'm going to show you kind of step by step um, shooting it. <clears throat> is it possible to show us which angle to use for the, for the right reflection? Or? Yeah, I can tell you that this is really nice angle <laughs> to highlight this spot. What we have, it's, it's, well, it hits, I see the light directly aiming to this spot. However, it's not about angle, uh, and this is why I have here. It's all about this thing called law of reflection. So this is what happens. And this is what we use in product photography all the time. And if you get it in terms of product photography, you can shoot any subject, anything. You can shoot jewelry, you can shoot glossy, you can shoot matte. It, it becomes immediately very easy to photographer to set up the lighting for the most complex subject if photographer gets this. Not just understand like in school, hey, yeah, I know that the angle of you know, incident ray and reflected ray uh, will give you the same angle to the normal, to the surface. Yeah, it's, it's easy, but you kind of start feeling it uh, with your, I don't know, body if you, if you want, when you start shooting and understanding it. So what happens here at Uh, at this bottle. What you see on this picture, you actually see a few things. And you see one spot, this, right? This is direct reflection from our spotlight. This is how it looks from the perspective of the bottle, basically. And a few more. Uh, one is here on the neck, right? And uh, one at the bottom and actually a uh, slight reflection from the label which is behind. That's where it actually gets diffused, and this is why you see not a spot, but much more, because paper is diffusing the light. So if you will try to fix this bottle by moving this light, you're not gonna get anything. Yes, you can move it. You can easily move it uh, thinking, okay, I need to get it closer like this and shoot. Yeah, it will change picture a little bit but still bottle will look quite different than what you see here. Where's our bottle? Okay, it just takes time because we do HD broadcast. Uh, you see the bottle. Well, you, you probably don't see the bottle. You see some other reflections in, on the black stuff. And this is what will happen. So you need to think in that, okay, this is glossy. I cannot really just move the light. Uh, question for you. If you would need, need to, use, to shoot a mirror, we all know mirror, it will be easier for you to guess. Somebody will ask you, hey, shoot this mirror for me. How you would approach this, the mirror? Probably one of the first things you would ask once you kind of start playing is, hey, what do you want us to see? Uh, what do you want to see on that mirror? Because it's, 
it's because of reflection. There is no way to, to shoot the mirror, at least from the front side. You can shoot something that will reflect on that mirror. For example, you can shoot, I don't know, maybe like a piece of white paper and black paper, which will go across the mirror and show that, hey, there is some frame with that kind of reflection. Or you can shoot something in the interior, having that mirror in interior that people will guess, okay, I see it's a room, there is something in the room, and I see half, another half of that room, so it's a mirror. So it's about reflection. And once you will start shooting that mirror, you will start thinking uh, what to get to reflect in that mirror. Same here, we shoot in a mirror. It's curved mirror, it's even worse, I mean, it's not flat. So you need to think how, what to do to make it a nice reflection in that mirror. Just a nice reflection. And because of the shape, there are different bottles, <coughs> uh, but shape is relatively similar. If you think about that lower reflection, you will understand that every, uh, I would call it, like a line on that surface will reflect different areas in the, uh, you know, in, around the bottle. This will get reflection, uh, if thinking about camera, from here. For example, this will get reflection because it's uh, on the angle from there. This will probably somewhere from here. And it's a relatively simple subject. It's just that kind of one curve on it. Sometimes it's way more curved and it even gets worse. So first thing that you do with your light is to change the light modifier to something larger than a spotlight. Because this is spotlight, which works great for matte. If let's say you're gonna shoot shoes, for example, not a glossy kind of fancy shoes, but just a regular sneakers, it will look okay. It will be actually something like my face on it. I mean, you will see sneakers because it's matte, most of them, right? And it's easy to shoot matte. So we're going to shoot bottle. This is what the best light modifier uh, for product photographer. As you can see, I have many soft boxes in the studio and uh, only one large, which is not really narrow like this, right? The rest is really, well, two actually large. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, like this, okay? So it's called strip box. Basically, it's a narrow soft box. A narrow soft box, it's cool because, uh, well, I'll show you while doing this, uh, it can be, it's not a fluid light, it's not like a beauty dish or let's say just a square soft box which kind of throws light. With this light you can uh, do some interesting things, but again, uh, I'll show you in the future. I mean, here. So, let's put it back to our light. Okay, and oh, do, 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 do. this is my worst case scenario when I just Drop it on the floor. So when we put this thing, <laughs> I would call thing, on a light, it's immediately what it does. Let's do a shot. Put it here and let's shoot. And looks like I moved my subject, so I need to refocus. Right, I need to refocus to make sure that it's, it is in the focus. Okay, turn it back, making it more harder to shoot, and let's do a shot. I guess it will take time to get here. Uh, to get texture from. Just to get the oh yeah, take a picture. If you, it's come, it will be recorded. The whole thing is recorded on that camera and screen share, and the video will be on footage. So no worry. I mean, if you need to get it. Okay, are we getting something? Or why it takes so 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 long? Well, that's the longest. Uh, <laughs> uh, tethered type of shooting when I ever seen. So. You see what we got. We see the reflection from the strip box, right? Yeah. It gets across the bottle. 
Why? Because it's large, it's way larger than the bottom and way larger than the spotlight. So we have all this reflection. Uh, it kind of gives us the idea of the shape, at least. So it's kind of cool. And it immediately becomes uh, quite darker, that spot, right, you see? Uh, because so box, uh, it kind of takes light, uh, well, it eats light, or how we call it, it uh, reduces amount of light because of uh, a few diffusers in the middle, right? You, you know how, what's inside the soft box. There is one diffusion, material, or no material, cloth, right? And uh, another one. So uh, I bump up a little bit the power, and question for you again, how I can fix this if, let's say, I need for some reason. Uh, there is a line which uh, breaks somewhere in the middle of the neck, right? It breaks. Move it to, to cover that area, right? If I move it, uh, it's one of the things. Yeah, we can move it if we have, let's say, room for this. Uh, let's say I'm going to move it up, right? I don't see anything here, but we'll wait again five more minutes to get it on the computer. Uh, so yeah, uh, you're right, one of the things, you move it, or you move it not just like this, you can get it closer to the sub subject. Sometimes when uh, your softbox is not large enough, it just means that you have it a little bit too far away, right? You move it closer, the reflections in it that will become larger, naturally, right? And uh, the reflection on this is supposed to become larger. However, here we need to think how to make it look nice, uh, because just that uh, direct line, it's not probably uh, gonna solve the whole thing for us. And, come on. Okay, every time I click on it, it kind of gives us something, so maybe I need to click. Okay, so you see, right, uh, we kind of fixed that reflection, it became brighter, uh, we get some interest in a reflection, or I would call reflections and refraction, because it's through the glass on the other side, which is awesome, this is kind of uh, rose wine, so light can come through it. But still, it's not uh, what we could consider a nice uh, shot of the bottle. The second best light modifier for the product photographer after the strip box is a diffuser. This is something that you can put between your light, even with softbox, and the subject. And this is when uh, it becomes really interesting. In terms of, if you look at this diffuser, it looks like a screen, right? Almost like a screen for, I don't know, presentation for the projector. So you can paint on it, basically. And this is what we do. We paint with the light. We create some nice, again, you don't see it because, well, actually I can, let me just say, increase uh, modeling light. Uh, the area which covers. Say again? The area which uh, yeah, of course. You, well, do you see it or not? If not, uh, you can look. But the light, gets larger area, and uh, it's actually, we're getting a gradient. You see, right? The middle of the, so, yeah, it's, it's a matte uh, fabric, right? And it diffuses light, so in, right in front of the uh, strip box, it's brightest area. Then it gets darker, 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 darker. And we can kind of change the way that gradient goes by moving it closer. In this case, it will be sharper gradient, more contrast. You see, it's already dark area here. There is no yellow light, not the modern light. Or move it further. It kind of softer gradient, right? So once we do this, uh, probably we'll be getting a uh, little bit darker picture again, but it should change the reflection. It's just a huge thing. This is actually why uh, I like uh, strip boxes. I can easily turn strip box into the large soft box by using this, okay? For example, I, if I really need square soft box, instead of uh, that strip box behind, I would use just the same reflector that I just used at 70 degree, put this diffuser, and it will be big soft box, basically. I just, you know, pull it. But I cannot do it 
opposite. I mean, it's harder to do it opposite if I have a large uh, soft box. Yeah, I can cover. It's one tip of the, you know, if you don't have large soft box. Well, if you have only large soft boxes, square one, but you want to have, uh, you, want, you need to use uh, strip box. You can always cover two areas, right and left on your soft box, turning it covered with black paper, screen, anything, uh, non-transparent, and it will be immediately just strip box. Okay, so where's our reflection? So this is the reflection. You see it's diffused now. You see more of the shape of the bottle. However, a cool thing, uh, that bottle looks now matte. Don't you think? Again, it's glossy, but because the way that we per perceive matte and glossy surface, matte is something diffused usually for us, kind of soft light coming from it. Re uh, reflection from the matte subject is usually softer. When we reflect in something soft, like the reflection that's uh, diffuser from a glossy surface, it looks matte. That's one of, again, uh, one of uh, mistakes, actually, that a uh, beginner product photographer makes. Sometimes I see interesting shots of some cool subjects, like especially jewelry, for example, nice engagement ring, and metal, that glossy, shiny gold or whatever, looks matte. It doesn't look glossy, because they learn how to use diffusers, they use them, they're happy, and they don't have any gaps, you know, all that uh, crazy thing which usually uh, gets reflected on the ring, but it looks matte. And the way to fix it, it's again, it's a little trick, <laughs> well, it's about our perception of things. We need to have sharp uh, divider between bright and dark area, basically. Something that will give us the feel that, hey, we're getting sharp reflection from that surface. And only glossy surface can give us sharp reflection. From a matte reflection, you, from, from my skin, there is no way I can use any light modifier to get sharp reflection. Yeah, I, there is something which I can project light with sharp cut off, but it's kind of a little bit different. But it's here we do it like this. We move our strip box, and I almost touch it with one side on the diffuser. So there is sharp cut off line and then gradient, right? And let me see what we get in here. And actually, if you can see from other side, you probably don't see it. But if you want, you can see how sharp it's from this side, right? Okay, let's shoot. Sure. And when you move your soft on the do you change your settings on your camera? Mm -mm. Uh, when I move, the only thing, or add diffusers, or add reflectors, or do any modification to the light, I do change the brightness of the light itself. Uh, so if it would be a continuous light, for example, I can change the shutter speed to make things brighter or darker, right? For strobe, it's not going to work. If I shoot at, instead of one to hundred of a second, if I shoot at one eight hundred of a second, it will be exactly the same picture. Because the strobe fires at one fourteen hundred of a second. So the light is really short, the time that light uh, gets. Still, shutter doesn't really play the role. If only I would use really long shutter, yeah, then we'll see all that light affecting the picture. Okay. This is definitely not normal, but it's coming. Okay, so you see what is going on. We see some nice, uh, let me do this. Let me uh, do a little crop for you so you'll see a little larger bottle here. One second. Okay. So you see the shape, and the bottle actually looks glossier, okay? Maybe not completely, but you understand that there is something glossy, especially a little highlights here, here. It gives us that uh, idea that it's glossy. Uh, then, second thing we can do, 
uh, to make it more visible. It's probably, it works for any, for people it's the same thing basically. Uh, we can add background light. Of course, if something dark on dark, it's like there is an easy way to separate and see that at least the edges of the subject, we can add background light. So I have a spotlight here, okay? This is kind of a um, fancy uh, way to say uh, spotlight with honeycomb grid. This is Fresnel lens, Broncolor Fresnel lens. It's just a huge lens in a box with a strobe inside. And uh, like I said, it's not a shop stopper if you don't have it. Like you can use just a regular circular or rounded uh, reflector with a honeycomb grid. Should be easy. And let's do a shot. And let me see if it's well, hard to guess. Mm. So is it clear? You understand? Or do I need to go faster, slower? No? Not, no, not boring yet? Okay. Uh, I have one question. Uh, is it possible uh, to use a instead of uh, reflect, um, diff diffuser? Diffuser, yeah. Call diffuser. Uh, huh? uh, instead of uh, this diffuser, just a big uh, softbox. Uh, I mean, uh, the bigger one uh, than you have now. You can use it. But what you won't get with softbox is what I did here. What I did here. I have uh, a gradient, so bright, darker, darker, darker. That's what we see on the bottle, actually. And actually, uh, it's cool now to see that uh, it's not really coming from the edge. But basically, if you would have a larger so uh, strip box, what will happen, you will have very similar reflection to this, but wider, okay? Just a wide reflection, uniform, because good soft box will give you nice, uniform, bright, or gray, or whatever. Uh, light. So, we got this, right? Uh, now I see that, hey, looks like we need to move this edge towards the uh, edge of the bottle. I mean, the edge of our light, the sharp cut off, toward the edge of the bottle. Can you guess where I need to move that thing? Further, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, again, lower reflection. Edges of the bottle reflect something that is behind the bottle on the sides. Not this. This is what, again, uh, many times I see the photographers kind of asking, oh, Alex, what is going on? Uh, let's say they shoot things on a white background. So they're blowing up the ground with lots of light. They shoot some glossy subject. They have some reflection, and edges of that subject gets completely kind of wiped off with a white light. Really edges. You didn't see the edge of, let's say, this bottle. This happened that they just didn't realize that the really edge gets reflection from somewhere here. And if they put, and they, they kind of blowing up the big background behind. Even though for the shot, they really need this big background to be bright, right? Just to fit in the frame. This area, if they put something black, it immediately would add edge reflection on, let's say, our bottle. So it's, again, always, we always check the law of reflection where this reflection is coming from. So I just moved it. And I can move it actually a little bit closer to the bottle. Same thing, it gets uh, toward the edge. And let's see. And actually I can adjust a little bit this light to be behind. Okay, ooh, now it gets faster. I don't know if something was changed, but... So, uh, we have black edge, we have some uh, bright edge, we have that uh, diffuser, uh, uh, sorry, gradient on the diffuser, which actually I want to make it softer. So what I did, I moved it away. I wanted to have it softer to get a little bit more on the bottle, okay? And I'm increasing brightness a little bit on that light. So I want to have it a little bit more on the bottle. That's actually one of the things. The diffuser is thin enough, so we see the direct reflection on the soft box on the I mean, of the strip box behind the diffuser. You see, it's a little bit kind of double, right? Double reflection. Uh, one second. Where is my mouse? Oh, come on. 
talking about this area. But it's easily fixed by putting thicker diffuser if needed. Uh, let's move forward. We have light, we see the bottle, definitely now we see the bottle because we see the edges, right? We see the everything, we see that it's kind of uh, glossy. Uh, we want to, let's say, what we can do to make it nicer. Yeah, ideally we need to have this bottle like this, and uh, we need to, like you said, probably need to have some something on the other side or in front. So I have another reflector. Let's put it. Let's see without putting the light. Okay, we can try. Huh? Yeah, it should yeah. supposed to bounce this light uh, that coming from other side. Again, it kind of it saves. Uh, in many cases, it saves. Okay, so you see now, we not really see the reflection from this because it's relatively uh, dark comparing to the other side, but we're getting a nice um, kind of refraction. Basically, we see the color of the wine because of this, which is nice. Now we have a label, I turned it in front of us, and we need to highlight the label. And again, that's what I see uh, in many cases, what photographers are doing. Uh, they do this. They think, okay, I need to highlight a label. Uh, they already know about difference between glossy and uh, matte. Label is, for this bottle, is paper, so it's matte. So supposedly, the light, spotlight, like this, should kind of fix the situation. So I put in a spot here, and I kind of aim in it somewhere uh, at our bottle. I turn it on that light, uh, probably darker. Let's see. So boom, definitely we got the label. It's nice, but we also get the reflection, direct reflection somewhere on the bottle. And actually, reflection on the neck, reflection here, and reflection uh, at the bottom. And one refraction, which is reflection from other side of the bottle. That's why it's a pink, because it travels through the bottle and gets bounced back from the internal uh, edge, uh, internal edge of the surface of the bottle. Now it's like, okay, what should I do? What should we do? How we can fix, let's say, I don't want that uh, white reflection. Yeah, it can be fixed in Photoshop, it's of course, but again, if you are photographers, we're trying to fix as much as possible in the camera. Otherwise, we can always call Photoshop guy and say, hey, draw me a bottle of wine. It's actually not Photoshop, it's 3D task for probably one, well, 10 clicks for 3D now. But anyway, we are photographers, so we should. What do we do? If you put a diffuser, let's try. Let's put, uh, I kind of will try to make it easy. I have this bum, little hand held diffuser, which I use a lot. Uh, let's say diffuser, right? Something. But what it will give us? Same thing. It's not about diffusion of that light. Actually, uh, what we see on the label, on the previous shot, was quite nice, except that it was a little bit uh, too bright, but in general, label itself looked really nice here, right? So, well, a little bit. A little bit bright, but label is nice. We can move the light. Yeah, we can move the light. Exactly, we can move light. Knowing that label didn't really care the angle of the light that it hits, it will be still visible. If we hit it from that, from that, label should be okay. Glass may lose that reflection. Basically, we need to calculate where we need to put that light so there is no reflection on the glass, but it still hits the label. Let's try to just lower it, for example. Because I see the bottle, bottle is not cylindrical, it gets a little bit narrower at the bottom. So supposedly that reflection that we see, it may be kind of eliminated if you move light a little bit behind. Basically, we can try to hide light behind the label. Sorry, hide uh, the reflection from the light behind the label. That's what the reason to do this. 
I can kind of see through viewfinder. I, I'm not supposed to see this light through viewfinder on the bottle. And I actually still see it a little bit. So the right, this is very right thinking of moving the light. And uh, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to change the reflection. Okay, it gets slower again. Uh, but we have, uh, I just want to show you, so basically it needs to be a little bit lowered uh, to get without reflection. Come on. I, I want to show you a little device which is really useful because, you know, again, it's technical photography. I really enjoy all those devices which uh, kind of helps me to, to get the shot. This device is called optical snoot or optical projector. Basically, it's a lens which can project anything on the subject. What I do, I put a little screen with a little hole in it, and I put it inside this, and it will produce very little spot. What I can tell you that uh, it's, I can, we had this jewelry on a model workshop uh, several months ago, and it was a task when we were shooting model, so it was like a portrait, uh, with jewelry, with black gemstone jewelry. It was a uh, necklace, it was uh, earrings, it was a ring. And what we did to get it all in one shot, meaning that when you shoot a model, you need to use uh, soft light. You understand, you know, to sort of soft and large boxes. Uh, and to shoot jewelry, especially gemstones, or for gemstones, you need to have really sharp light coming somewhere from the camera. That's where it reflects, gets sparky. So we use the device to aim few of those little things on her and fire them up without highlighting much skin around. It was basically that big spot. So uh, let me put it here. Uh, did we get the shot? OK, so I need to click to kind of wake it up. So that was our last shot, OK, when we moved it lower. Now you can see, well, you see what kind of light it produces, OK? It's, it's a spot. And it can be actually uh, even smaller if needed. I can make a smaller hole on that screen. So I'm getting here, and I'm aiming the label, only the label. And I'm getting the way that I don't want, I mean, I won't see the reflection from it on the bottle. So, here it is. We have a label, we have a bottle. The only thing that's still there is the reflection on the internal side uh, on the bottle. But again, uh, at this angle, it's not uh, going to work. We can probably shoot it a little bit from top uh, to eliminate, but I know that it's not going to work because I shoot uh, many bottles of wine. Because of the bottleneck, whatever you put on top, it will be reflected on the neck. Because it's curved, it's not just uh, flat. And curved means like a fisheye lens, basically. If you kind of think that curved surface reflects everything around on a very wide angle, the, the best thing to... Um, and I understand it, is um, those Christmas tree, um, how you call it, bulbs, spherical. Igrushki yeah. Decoration, Christmas tree decoration, those bulbs. You try to shoot them, you see the whole room, everything there. It's a fisheye lens, just a not refracted, I mean, reflect, refractive lens, more like a refl reflective lens, whatever. So, same thing here. Uh, what can we do uh, kind of nice to this shot? We often use gels, color gels. Little cool thing uh, which can change our life, well, the picture basically. <laughs> uh, let's say on the background, if we add some pink thing on the background and shoot. Huh? Just shoot one bottle, you have a plain view. Well, I kind of show you the. Uh, not the simplest way, probably, shoot the bottle, especially because of this. The rest is kind of really simple, and uh, you see that we're basically using two lights 
if not this. If, if you don't need, with three lights, boom, you can do everything. You don't need this spot, you just find the smaller um, uh, honeycomb grid, you put in the same uh, level somewhere so it's not really visible on the bottle, and you can do it. While we are waiting for the shot to come, Okay, so you see kind of looks uh, nicer. Maybe not exact color. I was lazy to find the correct gel for the pink. It's, it was pink, but quite different pink. Uh, but you see, it looks nice. And uh, well, this is almost the end of demonstration. Uh, let's do some funny thing at the end. I usually do, yeah, sure. So what about this small reflection? This small reflection? Yes. I would fix it in Photoshop. That's actually a very cool, uh, very good question that if you will try to fix almost, well, everything with the camera, it may be really good exercise for, for you when you are exploring things. It can be done, it, it can be fixed. Uh, I, I'm sure that I can find the angle, I was, again, I was lazy to find, where it's not visible from here and here. Maybe I, can, I need to move it somewhere like this, I don't know. Uh, and it's, again, it's great to understand that you can do it. Uh, and uh, no, it's even worse. However, when you shoot for the client, you really need to think about, oops, no, it's still there. So I don't know. Uh, you, you need to remember about Photoshop, because again, uh, product photography is commercial. I, don't, I rarely see people who just uh, shoot uh, product photography, especially just a bottle. Uh, after they've done it for themselves, continue doing this again and again just for fun. Probably not, not uh, so much fun, do it all over. But uh, for clients, it's uh, how much, it's always kind of balanced between how much time you spend to do this and how much money you get. So to be more profitable, sometimes you don't need to get more clients or, well, more paid for your assignment. You just can do it much way faster, right? So if you, know that, okay, in Photoshop, it's one click. It's really, it's one click with uh, the patch tool uh, to clean it out. Why to bother you to, if it's real work, you know, if you explore anything, fight for it. Uh, you, you will find, you know, to, to get it. Okay, uh, so let's do this. Uh, let's do a splash. That's the last thing that, and we'll, we'll have question and answer after that. Uh, I will try. But it's still a little bit dark. So. Where? The bottle? Yeah, liquid. Liquid? Yes. Well, we need to add uh, more light behind then. But you know, with the red color behind mm -hmm. and uh, red wine, it will be probably not the best idea to get, if you want to show pink wine, uh, to use a gel. So ideally, you don't need to use gel. You can bump up the power and uh, remove the gel and shoot, and it will be uh, pink, more pink. More light behind, more pink. Because again, this is refracted light. Well, it's not really getting there, but that means just you need more. You know, there are different types of uh, shots. For example, when you shoot for catalog on a website for somebody who sells wine, they want it on a white background, just a bottle. Uh, if it's a bottle uh, some, has some transparency like this one, they want to see it. So you just put a white background, put lots of light on it, and it will be there. I was showing you more like creative approach where uh, we still see that this is uh, rose wine, right? Red wine doesn't look like this. So it's okay, it's enough. It's not a misrepresentation because it's again, it's more creative, it's about uh, getting emotion from it. So it, it's okay. Like I said, we can do more and more and more. We can actually put lots of power uh, to that backlight. You hear it how it's like boom. So it gets, you see what, and it's even a little bit more exposed. But the label. Label. Actually, it's the same light on the label. I didn't adjust it, just uh, same light on the label. It's our perception. On the white background, things get, just look bright, I mean, darker. So if you kind of shooting in a white background, yeah, things look darker. We need to adjust light. We need to uh, put more power to it and go further. But let me uh, do a little splash and 
and uh, we should be good for the questions, answers, and just talk casually about this. Okay. Let me adjust the light and what I'm doing here. Uh, you may actually hear what changed. You hear the sound, that puff. Yeah. It's a little bit different. It, it's more, well, you probably didn't notice it yet. <laughs> it's like, well, it's sharper. So what happened, I changed the light. So duration from uh, 1400 of a second become to one forty-three hundred of a second. Yeah. And in this case, we can kind of do some crazy thing, like if I catch it, it's probably not going to happen, but I will try. Uh, three, well, test. Okay, well, not okay. Not okay in terms of that we're not getting... Oh, you know what happened? I missed... Sorry. Sorry about uh, label. I, I missed it. So it was not really aiming the label. That was the reason why we didn't see it really. So, yeah, spot should be exactly in the light. Because it's spotlight, it's easy to, you know, to change it. Okay, now we have label. So let me try to do the little emotional thing. Three, two, go. Ah! Didn't, didn't get it. This is why we have studio. Well, a little bit. Do you know I'm gonna stop on this? No, no way. <laughs> Few more. What I can tell you, that that splash is what uh, made, well, made me here where I am now, really. When I started shooting splashes, it brought me so much publicity, attention, and you know, popularity that I was actually like, wow. Just because it looks crazy. Uh, it looks, the whole thing about splashes that it shows something that we don't see usually with naked eye. We all see bottles, but you never see liquid like this, frozen. It's something, you know, catch your attention. So it's immediately, uh, well, catch the attention. That's what happens. <laughs> what needed. Okay. Three, two, go. What? What? No, I did click. I did click. It's not, it didn't fire. It was a misfire. So something against it. Yeah. Three, two, go. Okay, okay, okay. It's far from really nice, but it's at least something. And what's cool, you know, when you uh, have enough resolution, uh, you can always uh, crop that kind of thing. Uh, and it looks, well, this is relatively plain, but still uh, it looks nice when bottle like that. We see... Actually, there is no motion blur, there is a little bit blur of uh, not enough depth of field. But this is another topic. Uh, I have a few courses about splash photography, if you want to check. Uh, there is a whole thing behind it, how to make it work. Okay, so now we have uh, questions and answer time. And if you watch us online, guys, you can shoot questions. Sure. Not everyone can afford this kind of tools, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is the more affordable way to, to do the tabletop? Uh, I'll show you. The best, the most affordable way, and I'm really serious about it, uh, because I know this. Uh, one second. So, you know, uh, speed lights, right? You know, you know, let me switch to here. Uh, I have this challenge some time ago when I kind of asked myself, like, hey, what about if you don't have uh, uh, those things? Uh, one second, this one. If you don't have enough uh, lighting, you know, or money to buy it. So what I did, I went to Amazon, I bought three or four, I think three 
65 dollar speed lights. Yon Nunu, I cannot pronounce it, you know, this Chinese speed lights. They're relatively good quality, I mean, they work, especially for 65 dollars. Yeah, it's dollars, no. Uh, they, how much they powerful? They're powerful enough. Uh, then I got uh, strip boxes. One of them is there. It's the same look as I was shooting. I was shooting this policy buff, but uh, some no-name so strip box with a mount for speed light. And it was 70 more dollars on eBay. So I got three or four. Those. Actually, I got three uh, strip boxes. And I did record this course uh, completely using those speed lights. And uh, actually, this is the shots that I got using, you can count, 70 plus 65, uh, three lights. Uh, I can shoot uh, bottles. I can shoot uh, jewelry or watches. I can shoot, uh, well, some simple stuff. But again, macro, well, of course, it's probably easiest. You know, things like this. With polished metal, it's not about lighting. It's about light modifiers. So for me, the crucial was not what is behind the strip box. It could be, I could use just a flashlight, really. It's just not convenient. Uh, but set of strip boxes, some light, anything. Like I said, speed light is great because you can use it to freeze action. And you can use it outside to shoot models, you know, to use umbrellas and all this stuff. And uh, on that course, well, do-it-yourself uh, diffuser, of course. Again, I show in where to buy uh, you see those rolls, white rolls? You see this, this roll? Uh, it's a piece of roll. It's actually 50 or 30 feet long. This wide, savage plastic. This is plastic. It does, I mean, you can wet it, you can do it, or you can cut. It costs about $50, I think, on B&H. You can make, actually, this uh, diffuser from other side, from on the right, is made from it. So you do diffusers, you own with it, just any frame. Again, this is frame from, hi, I'll show you. That's fun. Oops, oops, oops. Boom, it's okay. No, no, no worry, no worry. Don't worry, this it. It's, if you would see how I shoot in the studio, you won't be surprised. So. This is frame from a hanger from Walmart. It cost, I think, $16. Uh, I just removed legs. So it's metal frame. That's really, no, not really. Window frame, right? Window? Yeah. I mean, the window with, how to say that? Well, yeah, but if, if you can hang it, if you can hang it. If it's not heavy, yes, definitely. But this is not the best way. I mean, not the best thing, unfortunately, because you can only hang it vertically. This type of diffuser with just a frame. You can use frame PVC pipes on, uh, you know, Home Deep. You can make a frame, but you cannot really do this thing with that frame. For example, many cases, I need to have reflection from here. How you can mount that? You need two uh, stands with clamps, and sometimes just not enough room you, because you have lights and stands and it's like, here you can do whatever you want. It's really easy to, you know, put it on any position just because of professional frame. This frame cost about, I think, $20 or so. So you can kind of spend a little bit uh, money on it. And uh, yeah, so it's easy. It's uh, in product photography, it's all about light modifiers. It's, it's really light modifiers. It's not about lights. Again, I have, uh, you know, I was crazy enough and it was good for, uh, for promotion. I was using, if you will search somewhere on free, we have this free lessons and I have few lessons where I was using just the uh, household lights, basically two uh, tabletop lamps, a stony lamp setting me diffuser I mean, with those diffusers and uh, I got some uh, shots with uh, phones or where is it? Well, probably not here, one of those courses, uh, probably. Anyway, 
it's it's not about light. It's about how you modify it. That's the whole thing about uh, product photography. And I can tell you a little bit about market. It's it's very interesting. It's w w way more narrower market for product photography if you compare it to uh, family, let's say, portraiture or newborn or maybe weddings. However, it's wider than many can uh, can think about because there are I'm not sure about Silicon Valley though. It's a little bit different here, but in Georgia, it was many local businesses, small businesses, that were doing something, producing some stuff. And businesses like, I'm not even talking about, you know, having a warehouse and selling you know, some, I don't know, machines or whatever they could do. Businesses like uh, Kendall, you know, which women can do in their house. Uh, some soaps and, uh, well, there are was many, many uh, clients when I was starting. People were just coming for me, uh, to me saying, Alex, I want to, these things to be uh, nicely photographed. Very simple little subjects. They used to do it with their phones. Of course, it looked like crap, and uh, at some point they realized they can spend some, not much, on the photographer. It's good for practice, you know, you can work with them. And uh, what I was doing, what worked for me, because most of my time till actually uh, 2013, end of 2000, no, beginning of 2013, I forgot when, uh, I was working as a programmer, okay, so full-time job, which covered my all expenses, and all I was doing in photography, it was my passion, so I was kind of uh, doing what I really liked, and even working with commercial clients, I have many of them, relatively many, I was kind of, no weekends, no evenings, I was crazy, you know, but I had time to, and passion to to do it really cool for them. Not just, you know, if they pay $100, so, I mean, I, I, of course I want $1,000 who need to shoot uh, 10 ounces for 100. But I was doing it like I was receiving many, many, I mean, much more money than I actually was because it was about making, I don't know, making cool shots. For me, some, the whole process was really entertaining. So every time I was kind of delivering more than they expected. When it was simple uh, shots on a white background, if they order it, I was shooting for them. And uh, again, because I have that ability to shoot myself without client in the studio, so they didn't really know how much time I spent, I was shooting a few things uh, more creative. I had some flowers here or there, a spot, gels. They didn't even ask for this, because actually they didn't know that it could be possible done, who knows, or maybe expensive. And I gave it to them. It was like, wow. And that's factor, that's one of the things which, uh, makes clients talk about you with others. If you just do a good job and they feel that uh, they spend money, they get what they wanted, they probably won't tell uh, their friends about, oh, you know, there is really cool photographer. Maybe they will think about, um, you know, competition or something. Uh, so they're not really share your information. So networking may not work this way. But if you deliver way more than they expected, something which, which made them wow, what happens, they even maybe they didn't know, didn't want, but you, you know why we're talking about things, why, let's say, I can, I can tell, hey, Mark is so cool, you know, by Mark. Why? They're not paying me. I, it makes me special to talk about something special which happened to me. I got some experience with Mac, and I can tell you, Mark, is, I got a phone, it was so cool, it was, you know, that kind of stuff. So advertising. To make it cool. Yeah, it makes me cool uh, to somebody who are kind of talking about uh, the thing. So when they tell, hey, I got that photographer, I asked to shoot my uh, soap and see what he delivered to me or she. They're like, wow. Oh. So it makes them feel special because again, it's only for special people. When I do it, I say, hey, it's, it's really cool uh, what you do. I, I admire actually kind of, uh, I want to support you. You're special. Here's what I did for you. Yeah, and they can earn more money because of those photos, I, I, I guess. It, it helps them. Her. Yeah, sure. So They need to explain in details what kind of final photo mm -hmm. they would like to have. So, what about them? Well, with the bigger companies, it's it's quite different. First of all, um, in many cases, big company hire advertisement agency to work with. So it's not you directly working with the company. 
Advertisement agencies, they have uh, art director, I mean, they have somebody who kind of uh, gets the whole thing visualized. On the paper, somehow they discuss with the client, and when they reach photographer, they usually know what they want exactly. Colors, what type of thing here and there. There is always room to tweak. We can always, you know, kind of say, hey, let's do this. Maybe they said, okay, do it. Maybe you can do it later or something. But uh, you basically, that's what actually turned me off from working with uh, bigger companies. That's where uh, it was the time when I kind of switched to education. Because more uh, higher clients I was getting, less uh, freedom for me as a photographer was left. Working with small business who just uh, came to you and say, hey, Alex, I get the thing. I have an idea how to make it nice. Let's think. Lots of creativity. Advertisement agency reaches you, send you this. Uh, yeah, the references, the, everything they know. And your part is to deliver what exactly they need. It's fun, too. I mean, it's great. And it's lots of money. But I kind of, at the time, I was shooting for uh, tutorials and education. I just found why I, I better shoot something for myself and tell people how it was done and, you know, uh, monetize it uh, the, as instructor. But yeah, with big clients, uh, with bigger, it's more about talking to them to understand what they really need, because still many companies reach directly photographers, so it should be some kind of visualization. You really need to make a sketch. Because yeah, it, uh, several times I had this kind of miscommunication, which leads to bad results. When you think about one thing, they think about another, you kind of talk about uh, on the phone, you agree when you shoot, they said, no, 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 this is what, and he said, I spent two days or whatever. So, communication, yeah, lots of, lots of things. But again, you, I mean, working for money, it's one thing, and very few photographers uh, do really creative uh, products for money, as I see. It's just like very, very top on the, you know, world uh, product photography. For most photographers, it's just lots of routine job, Hundreds of items on a white background, you know, catalog, uh, even jewelry, I mean, anything. It's, it's lots of work. And uh, it's great if you enjoy it. And uh, I don't know how we really can enjoy doing the same thing again and again. And I see, like, how to grow business this way. It's either hire photographers who will work for you in your studio and shoot it, like, every day, hundreds and hundreds of items. So you can just take more and more clients and it will build, like, company that, you know, does all this stuff and make millions. It's great. But if you really enjoy doing it yourself, again, I'm talking through my experience. It's not, I'm not saying that, hey, this is how it is. No, no, no. It's how it is for me. So I just found that even if uh, I shoot boring stuff, I find in time to shoot something creative and put out. Because this is how you can um, get different clients. When people will see that, hey, you're shooting creative things, they will may reach you for creative stuff. You shoot more plain things, you'll get more plain clients, you know, clients asking for plain stuff. Uh, of course, it's up to you. And uh, why did you decide to do exactly this type of photography? Why? Uh, product in terms yeah. of image still life? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I didn't kind of, well, I decided at some point, but not at the beginning. When I got my first camera and uh, everything, I was shooting, of course, I started from shooting my wife, uh, my friends, uh, landscaping, it was fun. Uh, then at some point I started, okay, uh, people as usual sell, was telling me, your photos are great. That's probably every photographer here from people, you know, friends. And I said, okay, uh, time to start making money. So I, just we registered business and I said, okay, it's a photography. And all kind of clients were coming to me. You know, uh, portraits, business portraits. Uh, I didn't really get newborns because I was really afraid. <laughs> but, uh, but more I was shooting with people, uh, more I understand that it's, uh, it's not for me. The, the technical thing when you shoot people, especially just the portraits, it's very easy in technical stuff in terms of, you know, lighting. But it's way harder in communication skills. You know, communication skill was uh, much. Uh, the requirements was way higher than I had basically. I didn't have my uh, much uh, in good English at that time. I didn't really, uh, and I was even now part of the culture. Uh, in terms of you know, in US, uh, you, to talk to client, it's good when you can talk about 
something that for both of you is fun and you know engaging, like last game or something or some movie. And I even till now I have no idea what people watch or where they go because we kind of really separated. I uh, you know don't watch Hollywood movies, so it, it's hard. That it was really hard for me to engage person and to get that personality, you know, on the picture because it's not about you know shooting just that face, right? It was about uh, expression, the emotion. And when I start shooting some still life just for fun, I put some, I remember it was one of the first thing I was shooting, it was, uh, you know, that sugar thing, Sakharnitsa, basically, <laughs> uh, with some nuts around. And I was like, I spent a couple hours shooting it. It was quiet. Nobody was, you know, looking at you. Because you understand, you remember that um, feeling when you understand that your model or your, who you shoot, uh, they start getting boring, bored. And they're like, oh, when, uh, when? And you, you kind of, it, it's a very bad feeling, for, was bad feeling for me. It was still life? Come on, I can return tomorrow and finish. So it was naturally kind of, I was falling to things that I enjoyed more. Because for me, photography was part of the enjoyment. I wasn't thinking about money. Well, I was always, but it was not critical. It was never critical because I had good salary. So it was, time was critical, yes, but not uh, the money and, well, it worked that way. <laughs> and uh, which resources uh, did you use uh, for studying all information about the studio lightning and the other stuff? It was nothing that time. I, uh, some forums, but, well, I was learning, well, I was inventing bicycle all the time, then I kind of found later. So I was kind of playing with things, and uh, uh, that's why actually it happened to me uh, when I started blog and, uh, you know, was showing how I was shooting things. It appeared that I only, probably in uh, English uh, kind of speaking world, I'm only the photographer who share only that still life thing, how to shoot, you know, without hiding anything. It was zero. It was, I mean, it was some uh, master classes like Sakharov, Igor Sakharov, great guy, you know, in Russia, but it was classes. You need to pay and you need to come there. It was nothing online even for that time. Uh, so I did it myself, basically. Mm. Most, it was, you know, very pieces, pieces, bits of information. I remember when I was shooting uh, my first watch, I got the nice below watch. I was using some, you know, light modifiers, lots of things. And, um, uh, I did online broadcast. So of course I was kind of not even teaching, but just showing how I shoot it. So it was like uh, more than an hour type of thing. I got nice shot. And uh, it was discussion after that on some other forums because it was f posted on my blog. Uh, I got some backlinks and I was checking what is going on there. It was people discussing and one of the guys said, uh, come on, he spent hour to shoot that watch and if he would use con, uh, it would be five minutes shot. And I like, what? What the cone is? So I start kind of digging and I found, oh, there is a thing, such thing as a cone for a photographer, which is really great for the watch. It's, it's there, you see this? It's, it's a cone, basically. It's a diffuser all around with the hole, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got trash can next day. I mean, I went to tar Target. Trash can, white trash can. I drill a big hole on one side, sticky camera, boom. And it was like, whoa, man. So, bits of information, really. Here and there, here and there. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yeah, 40G, YouTube channel. That's where all this uh, broadcast is going on right now. It's, uh, well, it's over there. Uh, if you, again, check if you didn't see it. Uh, on 40G, we have tons of free stuff to start with. And then we have those uh, courses which are not expensive at all. And, uh, uh, Well, classes, you know, I was trying to run classes here, local classes. I didn't get much interest. Really? Really. For example, uh, this Sunday we run a class. It's not product photography, it's modeling. Because, you know, probably we have we only one studio in uh, San Jose area that large with that equipment. Uh, it will be model specific, uh, special effects, how you call it, special effects uh, class. And so far, uh, maximum 10 people. So we're only limited. Uh, only three sign up. So we're testing things and not big interest. But, uh, where, uh, where do you publish your information 
Because Facebook, Fortig, I mean, Instagram, well, everywhere where it's like uh, I can reach people, but uh, there is, I'm sure there are huge local market which is unreachable yet for me here because we kind of knew. I remember we were running uh, in studio uh, classes in, um, in Atlanta. People were flying from, you know, Texas, from everywhere, and in Atlanta people were coming. But it was like, I don't know, five or six years before that. We have here one year, and uh, we were really quiet <laughs> for this. So. We'll see. I, I, for me right now, it's way, uh, well, for me, the whole, whole, whole project for 40G, it's way easier to, uh, to run online classes. We do it all the time. Even this is kind of online, and we had this jewelry workshop. We had few people uh, here in the studio and have a lot of people online. So watching online because it's a huge audience uh, uh, around the world. So it's all based on the, how you call it, spros. Demand. demand, yeah. If it will be demand here, I'll be glad to do it more. Okay. Any questions? Let me check what is going on here. Uh, speed of what? What do you mean? Shutter speed. Oh, uh, X sync. X sync of your camera. You know? Okay, so one of the things, uh, like I said, it's very um, technical stuff. So you need to know your camera, really. X sync, it's one of those characteristics that every camera has. Uh, that's when a uh, camera can open the shutter completely. Mm -hmm. Because beyond that, let's say 1,000 of a second, the shutter doesn't open completely. Mm -hmm. It gets a little gap and then move across the frame. And that's why it's not uh, going to work with uh, strobes like this, because you will see just a part of the image highlighted. Strobe is short, and shutter still moves when strobe is already gone, so it's all dark. We need to, and it's completely open. So it's 1 to 100 for most of DSLRs. For this, can be 1 800, because it's uh, leaf shutter. The shutter is in the lens, as far as I remember. No, maybe in the camera, or in the lens. Not sure, no, don't quote me. But it's, uh, for medium format, it's usually uh, the maximum shutter speed for the camera. If you use your speed light, do you have speed lights? Yep. Mm -hmm. So how do you use them uh, in, on, on location, for example? What do you how do you set your camera? Hmm? How do you set your camera? The, what, what the aperture priority or manual, how, how do you set the um, shooting mode? Aperture priority, yes. right? So let's say you need to use uh, f2.8, the maximum aperture for your lens. And if you have some non-expensive strobe, and if you shoot with aperture priority, you will see that on a sunny day, it will be, well, it will be impossible to set aperture like this. You won't be able to get f2.8 with a, just, let's say, Yanguno, that like, non-expensive uh, strobe, because camera cannot set shutter speed to compensate that open aperture, right? Because on sunny day at f2.8, I saw 100, it should be something like one two thousand of a second, mm -hmm. kind of. It cannot shoot. You, you can try, you will see that it will be blinking and showing that, or it will be overexposed. It will shoot one two hundred of a second, f2.8, and it will be lots of bright thing for camera. Yeah. You know, uh, about, uh, it was a question about uh, what to use and what light modifiers. Uh, again, want to uh, no. show you something. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Uh, it's again one of, probably one of the in the world course where I was shooting all that same wine actually with iPhone with no light, meaning no artificial light. That window, which is covered now, I have only one small window in the studio, right? And uh, we were shooting things, and all these shots was done with iPhone, with no studio lights. <laughs> and uh, everything is possible if you know how to modify that light. 
really. It's, you can shoot jewelry, you can shoot uh, you know, simple stuff, you can shoot on a wide, completely white background, by the way, that previous shot. It's completely white background right uh, from iPhone. Macro a little bit, a little bit jewelry, that wine, wow. iPhone. Another bottle of wine. So it's about... Um, Even this one? This is iPhone. Really? Yeah, it's not uh, uh, that light. I was using just uh, the, one of those mono lights that I just showed you in the beginning. But yeah, iPhone. <laughs> Guys, it, it's not... <laughs> iPhone, all this iPhone. Cool. Um, I used to, used to work with small clients, like small businesses, or... No, well, I may, may do it if it will be an interesting project, really something that will be challenging for me to do here, but uh, basically I uh, just uh, refer, photographers that, uh, refer photographers that I know. If somebody comes to me, I said, hey, we have, well, here I don't know, yeah, I don't know product photographers here yet, so I'm just saying sorry, but in Atlanta it was... Yeah, we have 40G, it's, it's, I mean, for studio, still life, for product photography, it's the largest education on, online project on, on the world. If you kind of start searching, it will come up. So it's, I mean, it's a big business. Uh, and it's, photography is very little part of it. Because now uh, I do less and less uh, shooting. Uh, I try to find talented people across the world who can do teaching. Actually, it's shooting and teaching, you know. Uh, so... We kind of IT startup here. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. <laughs> well, for them, it, I won't be able to shoot those products, but I, I'll be glad to teach them. Yeah, it's true. easier to teach because, again, uh, Etsy sellers, I'm on, I'm, I mean, they, they shouldn't pay money for photography. Just because I think you, it's very, you know, yeah, they, they, I mean, it's, they can learn because it's simple photography that requires from them. They're not going to, you know, yeah, ask for something. So iPhone and the window, <laughs> boom. First they need to take that course before we can talk. Because otherwise, if they say, oh, this is uh, how much? It's $35 or so, 40 It's too much for me. Well, you understand? Sometimes people, well, I have this client uh, contacted saying, oh, I have this uh, several hundred items of jewelry, and I checked it was like expensive jewelry, and we shoot in it. I don't like how they appear on the website because I shoot it myself, and, uh, you know, would you do this? And I said, hey, yeah, but we have, since you're already shooting it, we have the class, this workshop that will be, it was uh, last Sunday. You can join either online or you can come. And uh, the price was $500. And she said, well, no, it's too expensive. So, I mean, if, it's, if you shoot it already, if it looks like a crap, and if it's too expensive for you to learn a little bit, I can imagine how much it would be to hire a photographer, you know, uh, the budget for, for a photographer. So that's how it is. <laughs> I checked your website, and even for your free video, we have to register. Uh, to take a free course, yes. No. no. Free, it's free. You can, you know, we have uh, subscriptions, mm -hmm. which has lots of stuff uh, for free for subscribers. So basically it's free if you pay. So it's not really free, but it's uh, like uh, not, you know, on 40G we have this uh, very mixed, uh, mixed thing. Like we have courses that sells on only on store. And then we have courses that are available for our subscribers. Mm -hmm. It's free. And we have lots of tutorials for subscribers. And we have completely free stuff. For example, uh, this, yes, yes. So it's, I, I understand. I don't know how to solve that puzzle. I know myself that it's... Uh, I try to find, really. Free, cor free tutorials. Yeah. You see, free tutorials. This free, uh, three courses completely free. You need to register. You just, uh, <laughs> you're already driving. <laughs> so you see, this is completely free and it's open. You just need to have account. Because the well, system won't let uh, to, to watch them without account. And all this is completely free without any account. You just click. It's some behind-the-scene tutorials, for example, like this. 
a simple video of how to shoot those little gradients. It's on YouTube on our channel, it's completely free. Where I kind of showing how to do okay, those bubbles. You don't need to be your subscriber. You know, on YouTube you don't need to be, right? Mm -hmm. On YouTube you just, it's better to have to get the notification, but YouTube it's open, it's completely open. So this is what I was shooting kind of right here in the studio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Uh, we run these workshops. It's already, it will be a third workshop this Sunday, where we work with models. Uh, again, uh, on footage, I'll be doing it. It's under work workshops. So this is what special effects we're running. You see this? Uh, it's usually uh, Sunday. Like from 1 p.m., like this one, from 1 p.m. till uh, whatever it comes, three, four hours. We usually stay for longer. This is what we got. Uh, you probably know these girls, right? Mm -hmm. This was one. This was uh, another. When do you plan uh, to do the next one? This Saturday. Yes. Next one will be this, uh, this Sunday. This Sunday. This Sunday at 1 p.m. Uh, with smoke, with gels, with all kind of, again, makeup, model as usual. Yeah, this is what we did on the workshop. This is was that all from the workshop. Uh, and again, uh, we're checking the um, demand, if it will be interesting or not for people. I understand that it's maybe not just, uh, I mean, we're not reaching uh, proper audience yet, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's, if you have, if you, it's uh, 195, but if you, you will use 40G coupon, it will be $40 off. So it's uh, 155. And how to get it in the coupon? Hmm? And how to get it? Uh, okay. Click, pay, register, and come. It's easy. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank thanks. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I was really enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> Well, usually in the workshop, I, uh, right, right now we're trying to do workshops when I'm not really teaching anything. Uh, photographers doing, i more like assisting. For example, with that model, that's what we had and that we're going to have. Uh, I'm not setting up anything. It's like we have a model, we kind of, okay, what we're going to shoot? We have some uh, shots which we want to repeat, not repeat, but at least inspiration. And then... We solving problem. Let's say we put a beauty dish, we shoot, and then okay, it doesn't look nice. So guys, what do we do? Okay, let's put a um, modifier here on some reflector. So I put a reflector. We sh they shoot. We see what's going on, and I, I always I shoot it myself just to show in the picture, and then we kind of discuss what should be done. So because the whole idea is to, as for me, as to learn. So I mean, somebody who can need to not just, um, you know, sometimes how it happens on the workshop. Everything gets set up by, by instructor, and then you get your camera, and then click, 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 and you bring in nice shots from the studio. They look great. It's awesome, but I don't know. It's, you, you're not really learning much because you, you didn't set up it. And when you try to set up it yourself, then you kind of start not getting I mean, it doesn't work, and you're like, oh, what to do? But uh, sometimes you need uh, somebody who will uh, explain to you how... Uh, I'm here, right. But you need to try... You need to see why it's not working, what you're trying, and then, hey, Alex, what to do? And then I, well, I'll explain. For example, uh, if you speak about uh, me, uh, I have never worked with uh, such kind of umbrella, mm -hmm. so big, and uh, if I come into here first time, uh, uh, actually, I will not uh, to know what to do with it. No, no, yeah, of course, we can always, like I said, uh, because, you see, umbrella is needed for some purpose, not for just a purpose to try it. I mean, if there is a person to try, we can always try but let's say if you get in some particular look, like here we are getting this particular uh, look for uh, this one, for example, right? If, it did, if something is not working, let's say we use beauty dish, this and this, and something is not right, then I may say, okay, I know what is going on. We have two sharp lights, for example, we need just something larger, and we have it, let's try it. Then we bring, we shoot, and boom, it solved the problem. Actually, we tried that thing before uh, on the previous workshop, and it was great because uh, 
everything was fine when using small uh, dishes or small uh, soft boxes when you shoot with model. When you can direct model, you know, look at this point, don't move your head, and then you're getting the reflection, you're getting everything correct because the light is here, relatively small light. But if you want to shoot model dancing, beauty dish not gonna work, right? Yeah. Because it will be, you know, shadows and all that crazy stuff. With that thing, we figure out again, we just tried, okay, let's put it. It turned, uh, shoots lots of light. Very interesting light in terms of it's not diffuse, it's relatively sharp light, but it's from everywhere. It's like huge, um, uh, like, um, how do you call it? What do you say? Sun. 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 No, 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 no. It's like a ring flash. Mm -hmm. That thing, you can have way darker middle and way brighter edges of that huge umbrella. And model in the middle. And light is coming from the edges, but not really uh, highlighting her face here. Uh, and it was awesome because she can turn head and it kind of, it's not making her look flat mm -hmm. because it's like a, mm, it, it comes from edges still. It's not in the uh, middle, like you boom and it's all flat. So, and she can turn, she can dance, she can do whatever. And uh, did you edit this picture? Everything is edited. I strongly believe that Skin, everything. Well, we. Uh, yeah, I understand. But now I'm uh, asking not about skin, uh, skin editing, but about uh, colors and uh, lighting. Uh, you know, uh, it's impossible to change everything uh, using Photoshop. Yeah. So I just ask. Uh, I just want to know how much uh, do you change it. Well, it's not me who did it. Uh, well, of course, I've seen. Usually, we don't really change much in terms of shadows and highlights. Mm -hmm. So it was a real shadow. It was. Uh, we're fixing texture, we're fixing colors, again, skin tone and all this. Um, for example, hair, stuff like this, you can, you can make things brighter and darker in Photoshop, right? You can do it at the dodge and burn, but uh, it's limited. If you kind of missed it and you want to have uh, opposite side to be in the shadow to be on the right and bright on the left, there is no way you can do it from this picture. Well, you can. In Photoshop, yeah, for several days, you can probably recreate the whole thing, but that's not the point. It's relatively fast. Uh, I think the most of the time, uh, retouching for models, it's a skin. That takes most of the time. Because you do it, pim, 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 click by click, very little things. It's funny, but uh, for me, uh, I, now I spend most time uh, for retouching the lights and not skin. <laughs> That's because you need to learn lights, yeah. Lights is, I mean, once you set it right, it's not much. You can just enhance shadows, for example, make it a little bit darker if needed. But let's say if uh, you should, uh, this beauty dish and without any reflector or something under the chin, it will be too dark. You can pull up in Photoshop, but it will, lots of grain, and it's okay for web, for Instagram, probably nobody will notice. But if you're gonna print that, it will be visible. Something is going on here, because you are trying to kind of pull five stops and no way. At least with these cameras, they still. For models, it's Sony. I have Sony A7R2 for, well, I mostly use Sony. This guy I, I rarely use now. I use it now because, uh, I mean, for this presentation, because I can trigger it um, remotely. It's a Hasselblad. It's a me, uh, medium format camera with detachable digital back where you can pull up sensor from it and put it on another camera. So it's like... Well, it, 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 it used to cost a lot, now it's because it's uh, kind of old, but new ones, yeah, it's, they cost like 30,000 or so. Well, it was deal, you can get it for 50% off. They were selling on this uh, end of the year. So for 15,000, you can get the camera, which normally costs 28,000. Cheap, like a dirt. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the reality is that Sony uh, and Canon now you know, they're making great cameras. I mean, 50 megapixels, 40 megapixels, it's not, uh, it used to be that, you know, lots of megapixels here. But again, here you can get 100 megapixels now. Phase one just released. Right. So this is how it is. Uh, I think, well, 247. Do we have any questions? Let me see. You should ask 40G people to post reviews on your 40G studio in Google Maps. It may make Google more happy and can bring you new people. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Roman. Uh, probably a good idea. Actually, I, I, do you know or not? There is. Yeah. Go ahead. Is it possible uh, to, uh, for, uh, for example, uh, you told us that you will have a, a workshop here on uh, Sunday, but in case if, uh, uh, for example, I can't come because of I have another meeting somewhere, uh, is it possible uh, to look at uh, this workshop online? Uh, we can make it happen uh, because, like I said, we can record everything. But you know, yeah. since it will be non, uh, it won't be like instructional workshop. It will be practical, meaning that I won't be instructing you sitting here and uh, watching me. In this case, it doesn't matter. You well, there is a little difference, but you can watch it online and get uh, the most of it or recording. But if I'll be saying, guys, go ahead and shoot. You, you, you'll just lose lots of, uh, you know, the, the goodies from it. It should be. If you cannot make it, and you can tell me uh, Sunday morning that you cannot make it, we can do a refund. It's not a problem. If you're kind of thinking about the thing. It's, I mean, real people, it's, it's okay. I'm not. You see, we're not really making uh, much money uh, running here workshops. We're testing things. It's, Uh, you mentioned that the maximum uh, amount is 10, but what is the minimum? We'll run it, well, one. Okay. I'm not going to cancel. We already have three, and I, I'm sure they will, well, usually. Con last two workshops, the most sales was made uh, the day before the workshop. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, they sit, and then, so I kind of expect more. It's okay. Uh, ideally, we're running them the way that, and setting the price. I know how much it costs to work in studio like this and to learn this stuff. Uh, we set in the way that uh, we should have situation when tickets will go really fast and people saying, oh, it's only two, I want to join, but I cannot. We want to reach to that point. If we won't be able to reach to that point, then we'll be doing something else. It's either different workshops or different format of workshops or we'll see. So we kind of testing, testing, testing thing. And again, on footage, there is no people yet. It's only studio still life. We want to add that thing uh, to 40G at some point, but are still debating. Because we know as a community of product photographers. And if I post portrait, it's like, what? It's insulting. To, you know, the people react very strongly. Uh, so we'll see. Again, it's not limiting the studio. You can do whatever you want here. And again, I can open just another project website for the people and do the same thing there. It's, it's not a big deal. It's about how it will be interesting, interest for people. Because I understand that what I see here, uh, people go to uh, workshops where, you know, shooting things on, on location a lot, uh, with speed lights or without speed lights. People go to uh, workshops uh, with big names like Emily De Soto. Emily De Soto. Check her out. She's shooting, you know, workshops usually full. Uh, it's like a couple thousand dollars workshop, two days. Um, she's a great photographer, but, you know, it's, it's pure art. When I look at her photos, at least uh, from the workshop, I like, I'm not getting something. I just don't get in what, what. But, uh, I mean, I've seen her portfolio. She's just great. Lots of things. She do commercial stuff. Uh, but people are paying for this because, well, some experience. You know, it's, it's just a different, I can tell you that it's different uh, business, you know, running workshops locally, especially with people, and uh, doing it online. It's online, we the best. Locally, we learn things. Okay. Alrighty, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming. Uh, oh, where is it? I, I will... Talk maybe a little bit to our audience after I say goodbye to you. I don't know. I'm not going to switch it. Okay, здорово. Спасибо. Спасибо, что пришли. Так, в час мы говорите, да, начинается. Просто я тут уже не все воскресенье с ним Спасибо. Мне тоже. Очень приятно. Спасибо.
все. Хорошо, Спасибо. будем на связи, да, да. давайте. Онлайн, если что. До свидания. До свидания. Сейчас я закрываюсь. Ходи. Ради. I'm back. It's a little bit unusual uh, to do it, you know, both in online and here. So, guys, we are alone now. <laughs> if you have any questions to what I was showing before, I'm sure if you, well, mostly you 40G uh, reader, so you probably know this. This is pretty basic stuff, and uh, that's why you didn't get any questions. Uh, but, you know, let me move lights a little bit. Uh, we can talk about, you know, in ten, about 10 minutes or so. Uh, I see people on the chat, so one second, I read it in a moment. Okay. Getting a little bit colder. Okay. Uh, hi, Alex. Um, two, 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 two. One second. Already chat. Alex, uh, which speed did you use in the camera and which power in the flash to freeze the water on the shot? <laughs> Thank you for webinar. Greetings from Germany. Guest 179. Uh, well, that's cool that you've seen it uh, through Germany. I think it was not easy to watch live events on YouTube, right, in Germany. Uh, I sp uh, the speed of the shutter speed was one to hundred of a second, so it's not where I freeze uh, it with. But uh, flash duration was over one four thousand of a second, t point one time, so very short. And uh, at one four thousand t point one, you can freeze most of the splashes. Okay. Uh, Julie, uh, hi Alex, Julie workshop was also free, missed it. Dmitry, no, no way. Uh, Julie workshop, you know, giving Julie workshop for free, it's um, probably close to uh, giving Julie for free, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and like some diamonds for free. So, no, no, it, it, it wasn't free. It was a premium workshop. Uh, and, uh, you know, Julie, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, it's very narrow topic. And uh, since audience is very narrow, it's little, uh, it's usually it's higher price than, let's say, model workshop, because again, uh, it's, it's limited. You know, it's like why Canon cost uh, $3,000, the best, most expensive Canon, and why Hasselblad cost, uh, same Hasselblad is 50 megapixel sensor. I mean, Canon 50 megapixel, and Hasselblad 50 megapixel, it costs $15,000. Not because Hasselblad is uh, five times cooler I and mean, better. It's just a production. Hasselblad, they sell, I don't know, a thousand cameras a year. And uh, Canon sells 100,000 cameras a year, a year. So the price uh, can be set accordingly. Uh, probably Canon has way more sophisticated maybe software or who knows what. So same thing with jewelry. Okay. Let's see. Two Einstein and two Ellen Chrome can work together on light color or light color changing uh, from Kaya. It was uh, relatively two hours ago <laughs> question. It depends, guys. Uh, two Einstein has, well, Einstein has uh, color. 
Einstein's has color mode, correct, I mean the color, uh, constant color mode, sorry, constant color mode, which means uh, it's not changing color when you change uh, uh, flash power, right? And uh, alien chrome, as far as I know, you didn't tell what kind of model of alien chrome, but as far as I know, alien chromes uh, also preserve same uh, color temperature across the power range. If it's the case, then you can mix them because I think all the strobes in constant color mode, they set to 56K, 5600K, I think so. So you can mix it. Uh, for example, I, I'm mixing uh, Einstein with uh, brown color, not a problem. If Einstein in color mode, if it's on speed mode, colors get different. Uh, Dmitry saying, recently I bought a course from, oh, I see, you bought a course from Julie, but there is some new course. Do you have some teaching about making sparkling of diamonds? Uh, Dmitry, <laughs> about sparkling diamonds, it was interesting. Um, on the last workshop that had, uh, because we had this uh, part of video production from it, when, uh, you know, it was video rotation, uh, we got... Actually, we kind of covered this really cool about sparkles. Because, you know, uh, sparkles on little diamonds uh, for the photography, it's relatively easy to achieve. But when it comes to the video, they need to be really sparkly. And uh, my promotional video, my very first video of jewelry rotation, you know, 300, 360 degree rotation, which you probably have seen, I used for promotion. I was critiqued uh, about really good guy uh, that uh, diamonds were not sparkly. So we kind of took it... Uh, into account, and uh, when we are doing this uh, rotation, it's not released yet. Here on the studio, we kind of adjusted lighting, and it was really cool. It was some nice, really nice rotation. I can probably uh, show you some uh, how it looked like. Yeah, so it, it covers. I think we, we covered it uh, on... Uh, the last two jewelry courses on this one, uh, which was a workshop and the jewelry course, which uh, we used um, the large, you know, large gemstones on the model and the tabletop. But mostly for for this, uh, for, for the last workshop, we covered it. Okay, want to show you a little bit. if it will work. So this is a final cut with some jewelry. And uh, let me see where we got the project. So this guy has lots of diamonds, you see, those little ones, and uh, it was really cool to kind of bring sparkles. Well, you probably won't see it here, uh, but it was kind of cool. <laughs> we got them. It was a really visible difference, you know, how they start kind of throwing those little sparkles. Yeah. Well, you, you probably didn't see much of it. Unfortunately, color sparkles. We didn't do anything sp special for colors. You know, sometimes they add uh, little gels, not on the light, but on some uh, areas where light gets uh, to add colors on the. Uh, gemstones, but we didn't do it this time uh, because, as I understand, uh, some of the diamonds can be, uh, you know, can throw different colors itself. Some of them not. Probably the more expensive did colors, maybe. I don't know. Okay, I think it's time to stop this because it was lots of long, I mean, really long. Uh, broadcast. It was cool.
Thank you if you watched us. Uh, have some ideas to do it more on regular basis, but still not sure if it will be interesting for for you guys. Let's say if you, every uh, Friday we can do like 30 minutes. I kind of talking about this time to time. Uh, still not sure. <laughs> okay, so thank you. It was Alex Koloskom from 40G.com. Subscribe to the channel uh, 40G on YouTube if you want to uh, watch videos like this and free broadcasts. And uh, of course, check free tutorials on 40G.com and not only free. Uh, we are releasing soon interactive courses, uh, certification courses, basically. Uh, uh, in Russian, we call it um, uh, авторские курсы. Didn't find any anything which uh, corresponds this name uh, on English, but basically it will be really cool. We kind of we building um, the school school something which will require lots of work from our students, not just you know I pay I watch here and there and then I just forgot uh, what Ilya Plotnikov did. It was very very uh, good in terms of um, what people learned because they were forced to do lessons and uh, we're going to certify them and we're going to run courses. Okay. It's like a secret. Yeah. Pryanishnikov doing Jurli, right? And uh, I forgot the name of the next guy. Pryanishnikov. Мы с ним хорошо так общались, но я не могу никак затянуть, чтобы он курс сделал. Окей. So, cool. Thank you. And talk to you next time. And bye.